healing, salvation, and happiness. It's your season. It's your time. God has plans for your life to prosper you and to give you hope and a future. Join us and learn how God's love and power can bring hope and happiness to your life. This is your opportunity for motivation, encouragement, and purpose. Welcome, church family. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network, where we bring you the Lord's Word every day from some of the country's most inspiring churches and pastors. And today is no different. Let's check out one of the newest members of the Daily Gospel Network. We want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God with one touch in the streets. We're touching hearts and changing lives with oh, one touch ministries. We're here for you right now. God bless you, everybody. My name is Prophetess Naditra Young. And listen, I'm telling you, God has given me a word for you today. I am so super excited. It is a fantastic Friday, and I'm excited because God has given me this word, and I do believe it's going to bless your life. So before we go any further, listen, I want us to go to the throne of grace. So bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's go ahead and, and pray. Father, we thank you today, God, for blessing us. We thank you, Father, because of your word. Your word is so true. And God, we thank you today because we're alive and we're well today, God. God, I thank you for your people that are viewing today. God, we ask you right now to bless your people, God. Take them to a whole nother level, God. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for all that you are doing. We thank you for what you're about to do, God. God, we thank you for your healing. We thank you for uh, restoring us, God. Making us whole. Making us better in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you right now, allow this word uh, to be a blessing to your people. Allow this word word to penetrate the hearts and the minds of your people. God, I ask you to allow this word, hallelujah, to shake up uh, the things that are in people's lives today, God. Let it be healing. Uh, let it be nourishing for the soul. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hallelujah. Listen, guys, I am so excited because God was giving me a word that's going to bless your life. God was giving me a word that was going to, to, to heal and mend the broken pieces that are in your life today. Listen, I was going through the, uh, the word of God and I said, God, please show me where you want me to go. Tell me what you want me to do because... It's so much going on and everybody needs, they need you, God. And, 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 and I said, God, I want to be able to be encouraging to your people. I said, how would you like for me to go off and do this? How would you like for me to do this? God, show me what to do. And sure enough, God began to show me. He took me to uh, Galatians, the fifth chapter. And it was so funny because the week before, my pastor was preaching and he was speaking about Galatians. He was in Galatians, the fifth chapter, and we were going through Galatians. And I'm telling you, he was breaking it down. It was blessing my soul. So I said, Lord, I, I do believe this is what you're calling me to talk about. I, I do believe you're calling me to take it to my platform. And I praise God because God let me know. He said, I'm taking you to another level. He said, but I want you to explain to the people of God. He said, I I want you to explain to my people about jealousy. Woo, glory to God. So today, we're going to talk about jealousy. It's so much jealousy going on in the churches today. Okay, and you're probably saying, why would you talk about just the church? The reason why I'm talking about the church, because we as church folk, we as Christians, we already know that jealousy is in the workplace. We already know that jealousy is in the world. We already know that jealousy resides next door or down the street. We already know about that. 
but I want to talk about the jealousy that we have against one another in the kingdom. Yes, in the kingdom. And the reason why I'm talking about jealousy inside the kingdom, because sometimes jealousy is residing in the kingdom, but it never gets addressed. But God told me today, he said, I want you to address the word jealousy in my Asha. He said, I want you to address the jealousy that the people of God are carrying in my kingdom. And this is one of the reasons why things can't get done in the kingdom because we're too busy being jealous against one another. That's one of the reasons why things are not producing the way we would like for it to produce because we are jealous of one another. And God is calling for his people. Woo, glory to God. I feel my help coming on. God is calling for his people not to be jealous, not to be envy, not to be angry, not to be frustrated with one another. Hallelujah. God is calling for us not to be conceited. Woo. Oh, glory. God is calling for us not to be looking for the glory all the time. Looking for people to praise us. Not to be proud. And in the word of God. Oh, glory to God. I'm going to bring it down. In the word of God. It states for us not. Not to be jealous of one another. Not. To be envy, not to be conceited, not to be a uh, uh, vainglorious, for us to be loving and respectful to one another. And we wonder why things don't move in the kingdom. It, it, it reminds me of a, the story of Panina and Hannah. How Panina was so jealous of Hannah. And, and, and you're probably saying, well, she had the children. She shouldn't have been jealous. See, a lot of times, just because she had something that Hannah wanted did not mean that Panina was not jealous of Hannah. Because sometimes people are not jealous of the material things that you have. They're jealous of the peace that you have. Come on, somebody. When you have peace, Sometimes people are angry because the peace of God rests upon you. The glory of God. Or because you are anointed in an area. Or you're anointed as an individual. And people are not always jealous of the material. They're not jealous of the houses, the cars, and the lands. They're not jealous because you have a pool in the back. They're not jealous because you can go on trips. They're not jealous because you have a, a beautiful job that pays a lot of money. Money. They're jealous of a lot of times of your peace because even though you have these things, it still keeps you humble. And people are angry because how, how can she stay humble and how can she stay so sweet and kind? How can he be so nice and still have all these things? People are jealous of the peace that rests upon you. You know, I used to say when I would find out that people were jealous of me. It would, it would crack me up sometimes because I, I, the reason why I would laugh is because I said, well, I don't have the material. I don't have, I don't have all these beautiful things. What are they jealous of me for? And my husband had to tap me on the shoulder one day. He said, honey, people are a lot of times are not jealous of because you don't have the material that they have. He said, a lot of times they're just jealous because... You have a peace about you. You're at peace with life. You're at peace with adversities that come your way. You're at peace when things don't go the way you want them to go. You become at peace. <laughs> so I had to realize that people weren't upset of my material. They were upset because I had peace. Okay. So if you will go with me to Galatians. The fifth chapter. I'm just going to read verse 26. It's the last verse. I'm just going to read that one. It says in the word of God. Galatians the fifth chapter. Verse 26. It says. Let us not become conceited. And I'm reading from the 
I'm sorry, the NLT, New Living Translation Version. It states, let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. Okay, that, that's the, the New Living Translation. Then I'm going to read the English version in my Bible. Genesis, I'm sorry, not Genesis, Galatians. Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 26. It says this. We must not be proud or make trouble with one another or be jealous of each other. So they're both saying, they're wording it differently, but they're both saying the same thing. One says, let's not be conceited. Let's not become conceited or provoke one another. And this one says, let's, we must not be uh, 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 proud or make trouble with each other. My God. Or be jealous of one another. So, so, so they're all saying the same thing. They're all saying the same thing for us not to be jealous. Let us not provoke one another. Let's not be conceited. Let's not hold the hand of pride. Let's not be proudful. See, these are all the things that God does not like for us to do in his kingdom. And the reason why I'm speaking about this today is because, you know, it, I, I was, it was brought to my attention that there was a, a, a big apostle, you know, that I know that was jealous of me. And I, I became a little... Uh, puzzled by it. I said, why would he become jealous of me? And when I heard the story and I heard the truth and I found out some more information, I had to go into prayer. And I went into prayer and I began to talk to God. And I said, God, I said, I, I, I really don't understand what's going on here. Why would they be jealous of me? Why, why, why would they be envy of who I am? Do they not know what I've been through? God, do they not know that I had to struggle to get where I am today? And God began to show me. He said, it, it, it has nothing to do with the fact that they're so jealous of the material that you have. They are jealous of the fact that you were willing to work to get what you have. Okay. Some of y'all are probably saying work. Yeah. He said, because you worked. You didn't allow your circumstances to hold you down. You didn't allow what, what, what was said about you years ago hold you down. You didn't let what was done to you as a child hold you down. You kept going and you did not stop. And then he said, because you were willing to go get healed. Oh God, I'm going somewhere with this. You were willing to stop ministry. I see, oh, 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 oh I think I hit something here. See, a lot of times when we are going through something, you know, and we're in ministry, we just keep going. We don't stop to get healed. We don't stop to get delivered. We don't stop to, to, to take a break, to kind of like um, compartmentalize everything and debunk things and put things in categories. That's what those words mean. Uh, we don't go to go get a, a, a detox. Uh, we we just keep going and and we keep going and we keep going and and what happens is uh, our minds begin to go. Uh, then our bodies begin to get. Uh, we get sick uh, all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Things begin to attack us because we don't take the time to get healed. Uh, and, and then we put everybody in the same category of the people that hurt you, and we just keep hurt. We allow we allow ourselves to uh, uh, attach ourselves to people who 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 uh, uh, disrespect us, uh, and then we get angry at them and we lash out at them, uh, and then we come back and then we get connected with somebody else and they treat us nice but because the people that disrespected us treat us so bad they look at everybody else as the same way so they start uh, uh, disrespecting other people or, or, or they don't want to get stay connected to this person they hurt you before they they hurt you before they get a chance to hurt you and it's so many so many different things that we do we hurt each other all day long and it's, it, it becomes 
It becomes like a cycle. And God was telling me, he said, because you stopped. He said, when I told you to stop doing ministry, you stopped. You were obedient. He said, I told you to go get healed. And I, I'm sitting there and I'm praying. I'm like, God, but I don't understand. He said, see, you got to understand. He said, because you were willing to be obedient. You were willing to go get healed. You were willing to go get set free. You were willing to get training. You were willing to get, get some education. He said, you were willing to go back to school. You were willing to do these things. And he said, this person is not jealous of, of the material so much. He said, he's jealous of the fact that. Glory to God. He said he's jealous of the fact that you were willing to go get healed. You were willing to stop doing ministry and not care about the naysayers. You were willing to go get help. See, a lot of times we become so caught up in the title of what we're doing and we don't never stop to go get help. God is telling us today, in order for us not to be jealous of Mrs. So-and-so and Dr. So-and-so and, and your brothers and your sisters in kingdom, ah, my glory to God, hallelujah, you got to sometimes stop and say, hey, I need a little bit of help over here. I need somebody to come help me. I need to go sit down and I need to go get healed or I need to go to a therapist. We kingdom people don't like the word therapist. We don't like the word doctor. I, I, I need to go talk to somebody. I need to make sure that I, I'm getting myself together. I, I may have to take a hiatus for a little while. I, I have to take a sabbatical. Nobody wants to do that. Everybody just wants to keep going. All I need is Jesus. All I got to do is go pray. God said it's time for y'all to stop in your tracks. So that you can go get healed. So you won't become jealous. So you won't become conceited and provoke other people. Okay. Ha. Glory to God. See, see, a lot of times we, we don't see ourselves. We don't never say, God, show me me. Everything else can wait. Show me me. And, and, and God began to show me. He said... Going back to the story, he was saying to me, he said, you know, this person was never really jealous of your material. They were really jealous of your peace, your peace of mind, being able to bounce back. They were jealous of the fact that you could go into places that they could not go into because they weren't authorized. He said the reason why you were able to go through those places and the reason why you were able to go in those places, he said, because you were willing to be obedient and stop, stop right in your tracks and say, I'm going to go get healed. I'm going to go get set free. I'm going to go get some deliverance. And because I was willing to go get deliverance, God said, and now that I have you back on the track, now I have you moving. He said, you're going to bypass people that have been in ministry for years, doing things for years. You're going to go to places that they can never go to because why? Obedience is better than sacrifice. See, a lot of times we don't want to be obedient to the word of God. We, we would prefer to live in luxury. We will prefer to live, uh, uh, have money than go get healed, set free and delivered. We would rather go, 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 uh, uh, hang out with celebrities than to be obedient to the word of God and go sit down somewhere and get some, ourselves together. Today, today's people, God is telling you to stop what you're doing and go get healed. Today, today, the people of today, our leaders of today, the people, I'm, and you know what God told me? He said, you also have to remember, he said, hurt people hurt people. Like the saying of misery likes company, God was showing me, he said, you got to remember that individual is still hurt from previous things. So because he's hurt, He's going to hurt everybody else that's around him. He's going to hurt them before they get a chance to hurt him. And God began to show me this. He said, don't take it personal. 
and, and I had to get my 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 spirit right because I was beginning to carry the spirit of offense. I was beginning to be offended and God had to check me. He said, don't be offended by this. He said, look at this as a reward. I said, how can I look at this as a reward? He said, because you stepped into a territory that he was trying to get in. He was trying to get in that territory and couldn't get in. He said, but I allowed you to walk through it. And when I allowed you to walk through it, he said, that's where the anger came from. He said, but he fails to realize you did what I asked him to do, which was be obedient and stop and go get some help. So I, I, I'm saying all this to say to you in the word of God, it states for us not to be jealous, not to be conceited, not to have pride, not for us to provoke one another. And see, and this is what we have to do in the kingdom. We have to be in a position where we're willing to not be conceited. We have to be willing not to get jealous because somebody has something that you desire to want and have. Okay, so, so, so I, I learned one thing with prophecy. I learned this in training. When the man of God or the woman of God is prophesying, giving a prophetic word to someone. And it just so happened that you are in need of the same thing. I was taught this. They said, if you praise God with him or her that is receiving the word. If you praise God with them, just like the prophet or the prophetess has come to you and said it to you, don't you know God will move on your behalf? So I, I tried it one day. I, I saw that there was a sister in Christ. She was getting a prophetic word. And, 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 and the word was exactly what I needed for me. What I needed for me to the T. I mean, it, it crossed the T and it dotted the I. Well, you know what I did? I said, I'm going to try this thing out. This is why I was in training. I tried it. I said, I'm going to go over there and I'm going to shout with my sister in Christ. And I'm going to praise God. Oh, shout. Ba -ba 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 oh, I'm going to praise God with her. And do you not know I began to feel God? And as I begin to praise God, do you not know within two weeks what I had asked God for in secret began to happen in public? Oh, Jesus. All because I praised God with a sister who was getting the word that I needed. Okay, y'all. <laughs> I hope you catching this. We have to learn how to praise God for other people when they're receiving a prophetic word. We have to learn how to shout uh, with our sisters and our brothers. Uh, we have to learn how, uh, my God from Zion, uh, we've got to learn how uh, to celebrate uh, somebody else. Uh, because when you celebrate, uh, when you jump for joy, uh, when you stand with someone else, uh, when you shout with your brother and your sister in Christ, uh, do you know how uh, God does things for you as well. Do you not know how God begins to move in the atmosphere on your behalf? Do you not know how God is getting ready to do something? So if you have a brother or a sister that is getting a word from God, I want you to shout with them. I want you to praise with them because the same God same God that is blessing them will turn around and bless you too. The same God, hallelujah, that is shining upon them. The same God, I said the same God that is giving them a miracle in their body. That's giving them a promotion on their job. That is pouring down. Hey! 
with them. If you be obedient and say, God, I need help too. But I, I, I know the word was for him. I know the word was for her. But I'm going to shout with them. Because why? If you can do it for them, you can do it for me. If you can work it out for them, you can work it out for me. I will not be jealous. I will not be envy. I will not be considered. I will not be looking for people to praise me. I will be sweet in my spirit. I will be humble and just watch God work it out for me too. See, this is what God is calling for us to do. God is calling for us to love one another. God is calling for us to support one another. This is what we need. Y'all have to understand one thing. Yes, we serve a good God, but we serve a God that loves us so much that if he does it for your sister or your brother, he will do the same thing for you. But you have got to trust him. You have got to lean not to your own understanding. You have got to say, God, not my will, but your will. Oh, my God, your will shall be done. And when God puts you to the test, when you say, not my will, but your will, you actually got to say, God, is not in my hands, it's yours. Oh, God had to show me. He said, you tell me all the time, not my will, but your will shall be done. He said, I'm going to put you to the test. He said, daughter, I need you to let go and let me. He said, I need you to take your hands off of this thing. I need you to let go and really let me come on in and work it out. Because like they say, while you're trying to figure it out, God already worked it out. He's working it out for you today. But it's up to you to trust. It's up to you to lean not to your own understanding. Woo. In all your ways, acknowledge God. Acknowledge him and acknowledge everything. Acknowledge him in everything that you do. Say, God, guide my footsteps. Take me to the next level, God. Show me. Because I can't do it by myself. I need your help. Listen, I want you to take the time to read Galatians, the fifth chapter, from beginning to end. I don't want you to be jealous of someone else. If you are in need of God to do something for you, all you got to do is say, God, what you're doing for my sister or my brother, I, I, I need you to do the same thing for me. God, I'm in need too. All you got to do is ask God for help. Help is on the way. Listen, let me tell you something. God told me to tell you. Help is ah, is on the way. Father, I thank you right now. I ask you to help your people right now. God, I ask you to dispatch your angel to each and every person's home right now in the name of Jesus. Help is on the way. Listen, I want you to stay in the frame of mind of prayer. Stay in the frame of mind that God can't do anything but fail because help is on the way. God bless you. For more information on today's Spotlight Church, Visit them on the internet and follow them on social media. I'm Renee Johnson with the Daily Gospel Network. And until next time, remember, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us.